Hi everyone, I'm Holly with Missouri River Soap and today I am going to make a batch of hot processed soap. Now this is not specifically a tutorial. I don't really feel like going in depth to what a tutorial requires. If you're an experienced soap maker, well you can just follow right along and I'll share some amounts and everything and a recipe. If you've never made soap before, it's something you really need to research and understand safety procedures because this is a dangerous situation. We have poison, causes severe burns. It's sodium hydroxide. It shouldn't be feared, but it should be respected. And it can hurt you if not handled properly. So the point of this is, come along, I'm gonna make some soap, I'm gonna share some recipes, but it's up to you to know the right safety procedures if you decide to do something yourself. So to get started, I do have all my safety gear on. I've got gloves, long sleeves, my goggles are on, closed toe shoes, long pants, etc. You don't want this stuff to get on your skin, so you have to take the right precautions. So I have my recipe, and I'm doing a 2.5 2 to 1 water to lye ratio. So I need 20.5 ounces of water. We use distilled water. I'm going to measure in 20.5 ounces. I prefer to measure my lye solution and mix my lye solution in um, stainless steel or into a scientific grade plastic. Glass can etch over time and then can cause some problems. So that's 20.75. I'm going to let it be just because the water is a little bit helpful. If I was using the water as percent of oil weight, it would be 34% and default is 38. And lye concentration is 28.5. I typically soak 30, so this isn't a big change in water. Now, I do measure my sodium hydroxide directly into my container. I am very steady handed when it comes to measuring it, but somebody else may want to measure it into another cup and then into their pitcher. So I do use sodium hydroxide from Essential Depot. I use a food grade, but it is still a drain cleaner. And let's see what this one says. It says high grade sodium hydroxide, lye, NaOH, for soap making, food preparation, and quality critical uses. Did you know some people use this to make uh, pretzels? Oddly enough. Anyway, that's another thing. So what I like to do is give it a bit of a shake to make sure there's no clumps. And I need 8.2 ounces. And I am not going to talk because I do not want to breathe in these fumes. I will hold my breath and do it the best I can. But wear a mask. Okay, so I finished stirring that in another location. So what I'm going to do now is measure out my oils. I do want my light solution to cool just a little bit. Okay, so I am gonna start measuring out my oils. I have teared the scale out to accommodate the weight. This is kind of close to the camera, but that's how it's gonna be for right this moment. So in this batch, I'm using 20% coconut oil. A little overkilled it on my bowl here. Didn't need something quite that large. So I just have regular 76 degree coconut oil. And I'll break up those pieces just a little bit so that they melt quicker. I have a little bit of palm oil. I have 10%. Now, let me tell you about this palm oil because this is a, you know, kind of a sticky subject. This palm oil is a specific palm oil. 
I bought it from Jedwards International, BulkNaturalOils.com. It is certified fair trade from Fair for Life and Palm Done Right. It's very important that you get good palm oil if you're going to use it. And palm oil does help make this soap harder and kind of creamy. Oh, it is a good it is a good oil, and I'm going to start incorporating it a bit here and there. I'm going to use 10% cocoa butter, and I buy the um, wafers. These are deodorized. And let's see, that's it for the hard oils. So I did not remeasure that because I know what those ones were because they were pre-measured. Now for the liquid oils. I'm going to use six ounces of rice bran, which is 10%. Get this from Soper's Choice. Right at six. I'm going to use 10% castor oil, which is also six ounces. And this is from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I go back and forth on whatever I can get the best deal on. And the olive oil is going to be 24 ounces. I just get this at Sam's Club so far. It's the best price that I have found. This is going to be the main oil. Just that last little bit can sometimes be more than you think. Okay, so there we go. So I have 24 ounces olive oil, 12 ounce coconut, 6 ounce palm, 6 ounce rice bran, 6 ounces of castor, and 6 ounces of cocoa butter. So that breaks down to 40% olive, 20% coconut, 20, or 10% uh, palm, 10% rice bran, 10% castor, and 10% cocoa butter. The light solution is now clear and it has sat for just a little bit. So now I'm going to add in a tablespoon of organic cane sugar. It should dissolve well in the warmer liquid and the sugar just helps create extra bubbles. So now I'm going to turn my crock pot onto high and let it just melt those oils on its own. All right, so these oils are all melted. I've actually let them cool a bit more. They're about 160 degrees now. I was busy working on other projects. The light solution is about 110. Like I said, everything's cooled down a little bit, but that's fine. We're gonna make it back up anyway with the heat of the slow cooker. So now we're going to bring this to a trace. And I try not to um, run the stick blender too much on the bottom so it doesn't scratch it up. Now I do like to have plenty of room in the crock pot. I have never actually tried making two loaves at once. I always feel like one loaf really does work out best for me, but maybe someday. warmer it does usually come to a trace pretty quickly but we're not there yet it feels feels like it's really thickening up but let's see yeah it's kind of coming to a light trace I'm 
Trying not to incorporate too many air bubbles. <laughs> So now it's definitely a trace. I personally like to get it a little bit thicker like this, so that's good. We'll just go with that now. And I realize that my spatula still has some, uh, there we go, that'll be fine. My spatula still has some of the cold oils on it, okay. So you can see it's pretty thick, and that's okay. In cold process soap, that would mean we don't have a lot of time. In hot process soap, it means we're on our way. So you wanna try not to have too much soap on this edge. You don't really want it to um, get too hard or anything. All right, so right now this is cold processed soap. This is not saponified or anything, so now we're going to cook it. So one thing we can do to help this cook is to use a little bit of plastic wrap right here. So I'm gonna go ahead. This just kind of helps keep the air in. Not quite big enough, but we're gonna roll with it. That was a little bit extra on the end. Whoops, should have, let's see. Can you slide over a little bit more, dude? No, okay, we'll just, we're just gonna roll with that. So back on with the lid and make sure that's pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna put it on low and we'll start cooking it. Okay, so making a video can make this a little bit more difficult because I want you to see, but I don't wanna release all that moisture, but you know what? We're gonna to have to do it because you guys need to see what's happening here. So we're gonna do this quick. Look at all that escaping. Okay, so can you see how it's like folding over? That's the part that's getting done. That didn't work. We're just gonna roll with it for today since we're trying to do a video here. Okay, so I'm thinking this is done. I'm gonna turn it all the way off. And we're gonna take a peek here. So you can see there's no more opaque parts in the middle and there's a little bit of like a runny liquid. And that means it's done. Doesn't that look good? Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is probably way too hot for my essential oil blend that I'm going to use today. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool back down a little bit. And then we will add in the sodium lactate and the essential oil. I just checked the temperature and this is about 196 currently. Again, it's not good to open and close this, but for the video. I'm going to test just a little bit of this and see how it is. So I have a little bit of water here and the soap. And this isn't the most accurate way to test this, but it's a, you know, kind of give you an idea of what the pH situation is. A lot of people will do a zap test and I run a business and I sell my products. And so my mouth has no business being a part of any of the process here. So I do not do the tongue zap test at all, ever. Not only that, it's kind of a horrifying situation. It used to scare me to death. My husband would do it for me. Okay, so I have these little pH test strips. And then it gives me a gauge. And so we're right in there on the seven, you know, seven, eight, area so that looks great the soap is fully cooked we're just going to let it cool down before we add the rest so i've pulled the inner part of the pot out of the slow cooker and it's just set it on my mold to help it cool off so while that's cooling off i wanted to talk about a couple of things one 
I highly recommend a hot process soap tutorial that's on uh, modernsoapmaking.com. I'll add a link down below. Lots of great information. Um, there's a good one on loving soap also that I will add that link. So what I'm using is a modified thieves blend. Now the thieves blend is it goes back to the story of during the bubonic plague and these guys were robbing the dead basically and they weren't getting sick and ever you know what was the deal why weren't they getting sick and they the story goes that they had this essential oil on them now mine is like i said modified because there is clove and cinnamon in this blend and that cannot be used at the high levels that I was looking at like a Mountain Rose Herbs um, blend and I broke it down into parts and all that and I just could not use it at that at that rate. So what I did was I came up with a blend that was 30% distilled lemon, 25% eucalyptus, 25% rosemary, 10% clove bud, and 10% cinnamon leaf. Now I'm using this at half an ounce per pound of oil. So for this, it's approximately 1.8 ounces. So the breakdown, I did 3%. So the breakdown is 0.54 ounces of the distilled lemon essential oil, 0.45 ounces of eucalyptus, 0.45 ounces rosemary, 0.18 ounce, I did 0.15 of clove bud and the same with cinnamon leaf. So, I used eocalc.com and that's a great site for helping you um, come up with blends and then figure out your usage rates. So I will leave all those links down below. The temperature, boop, real quick, 183. So we're almost there. We almost can add the rest and mold it. Okay, so this is cool and it's 170 degrees now. Going to Add in the fragrance oil. This will help loosen it up for a moment. And then I'm going to add in some sodium lactate. And that also helps to loosen up the soap. Now if you add your essential oil too soon or fragrance oil, it can kind of um, vaporize off. And even still, this is very strong. Um, flashpoints refer to the modern soap making article about the flashpoints. Now this is just how I make it. I make hot process soap like once a year if I'm lucky. So I know there's a lot of people out there that are very well seasoned in it. I started with it but we didn't know all the things we know now. And um, People are very opinionated about how it should be done. I'm just saying this is how I do it. And you're free to operate however you want to operate. I do not feel comfortable adding in milk and yogurt here at the end. So, I don't. I think at that point we've, we've really lost what we um, were working with with the soap being active. So obviously mine is not pourable. I'm just gonna try to get it in as quickly as possible. And this mold is actually a little bit um, warm, which is a great thing. There's, um, you can warm your molds. There's all sorts of things that you can do to help be this, help this to be more fluid. Not my favorite liner in the world, but I did not feel like lining with my freezer paper. The last time I made a hot process soap video, I had to remove the comments because people were being super mean. If you have um, a great way of making it and you want to be helpful 
you're welcome to leave those comments below for me or anyone else, but leave it at helpful because not really <laughs> interested in the mean comments. I just thought this would be a fun thing to make and it's a little quicker, a little quicker process. It does, it does still benefit from the cure, especially with the extra water in it. Um, but here's the thing. We're kind of going with having a soap ready a little bit faster. And if you use it a little bit faster, you just have to accept the fact that it's going to not be as amazing as if we let it cure. Now, cold process soap, you have to let it cure, but we've already sped that up by cooking it. So there we go. There's a lot left down in the crock pot and I'm just going to work on scraping that out and I will just make a a little a little pebble sized bar thing and I'll have some nice soap to use by my sink here soon. So I will still let this sit overnight because it's dinner time around here and then I will come back and we'll cut it. Okay, so I'm going to unmold the hot process soap, and I just love this mold from Brambleberry. You just slide this out, and the soap drops down. Let's just put that back. And then the silicone liner just will peel away. Mine's definitely rustic, and the yogurt does help with that quite a lot. I, I did some reading, and um, it really does make a big difference. Now, when I made hot process soap back in the day, I used a lot of water, so it was always smoother than this, but I don't like hot process soaps that really need to cure as long as cold process soaps. So I cut the water back, which lends it to a little bit more rustic look. So I'll get my cutter. Let's have my little single cutter here. And these are gonna be used for samples and home soap. So I'll probably just make some smaller pieces. That was pretty creamy and nice. Hot process soap often has this modeling look. Now, something to keep in mind, I don't make a lot of hot process soap. It's not something I've spent a lot of time, um, you know, really perfecting it. So, you just have to understand that point. Not looking for perfection here. Doesn't that look nice? Oh my goodness. It smells amazing. I love that blend. So, what I'm going to do, out of all these crumbles, it's everywhere. So, what I did was I cut a bigger block, and then I'm going to cut it into nice sample sizes. It's really critical with the hot process soap just to make sure you stir it in really well. You can see a little bit of modeling there. Stir in all your added goodies. I definitely prefer cold process soap. That's what I prefer to make, but it's really kind of fun to experiment with the hot process every now and again. Did I, did I do the right side? I did not do the right side. I started on the end again. So I probably will cut some bars for us. So I won't be exact. But here's like a regular bar. I probably should have some bars for the picture that I'm going to put on this. So there we have some air pockets. 
again the reduced water made it a little bit um, thicker and allowed it to have some more air pockets so I guess educate me what is the deal with using yogurt and other additives after the cook because to my mind that's kind of uh, kind of grody <laughs> It means all those items are just sitting there in soap that's already gone through saponification. So I would like to know what is the science behind adding the yogurt and other items at the end of the cook that allows it to um, not spoil whether it's still just the pH of the soap altogether, because I know with cold process soap, as long as you don't overwhelm it, it's the pH that keeps it from, from any of the additives spoiling. So I'd be curious, that bar looks extra creamy looking. I'd just be curious to, to know the science behind that. and maybe I'll change my mind. I'm always up for learning and improving if there's areas to improve, which there always are. There's always areas to improve. I guess I'll leave that one kind of thick. Turn that over because he's prettier on the other side. So I'm still going to allow these to cure for quite a while and probably even when I'm fairly close to a, a dehumidifier so that they will go ahead and um, dry up. Like I said, the thing I don't like about hot process soap is how it kind of gets waterlogged more so than a cold process. And again, I know there's people out there, you have mastered this. You have just straight up mastered hot process soap and that is where you shine. So I think this would be just a good learning scenario and hopefully we can get some just good, happy, um, kind comments that maybe we all can just learn a little bit of something. I must say I am enjoying my single cutter. This is this feels very therapeutic today to just sit and cut these like so. So let's I'll do that and then this will be this will be another little bar for us here at home. This is just a great for, uh, essential oil blend. It smells so good. It's definitely that earthy, you know, hot process health food store kind of uh, scent. It's really good. It's really good. All right, so there we have my little hot process batch of soap. Just looking. <laughs> I was gonna say cute as can be. I often say cute as a button, and my daughter's always like, uh, "Mom, you do realize buttons aren't actually that cute." Well, you have a point there, Missy. All right, so there we have the hot process soap. This rustic, fast, easy, fun. Alright guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.